Hey, what is going on guys? It is Matt and today I have a new video for you where I want to discuss the very serious topic of a zombie apocalypse. Now zombie apocalypses seem to be something you can't escape in the media at the moment. If it's not one man eating another man's face, it's a man eating a dog. So uh, I thought this would be a really cool time to um, discuss with you the things I would take into a zombie apocalypse and the things you guys would take into a zombie apocalypse if you had the chance to take any of the equipment from Battlefield 3. Now, I want you guys to join in with this, so um, in the comment section below I want you to leave the five things from Battlefield 3 that you would take into a zombie apocalypse to uh, not only try and keep you alive but to also fight off the hordes of uh, incoming undead. So without any further ado, I will now go through my top five things I would take and uh, my reasons why. Now um, I've broken down my list of top five things into uh, categories of a primary weapon, a secondary weapon and then some kind of equipment, some kind of pack and then a third and final weapon or kind of a uh, sidearm. So uh, I've broken it down into five sections. So to begin with, my primary weapon, out of all the weapons in Battlefield 3, it was quite a hard decision actually picking on which weapon I would take. And um, after reading online, some um, I took this quite seriously. I went online and looked at some forums and actually uh, referred to Max Brooks's Zombie Survival Guide. And after reading that, I've come to the conclusion that the weapon I would take as my primary weapon would be the M417. Now there are numerous reasons for this. Now, while the M417 isn't fully automatic and it only has a 20 round magazine, um, zombies aren't like human beings. You could pump in a zombie with a whole magazine of lead and if you didn't hit it in the head, it, would, it wouldn't finish it off. It'd still keep coming, or apparently, or so I've heard. So, um, having a fully automatic weapon that spurts out thousands of bullets isn't really the weapon I think you'd need in a zombie apocalypse. So I picked the M417 because... Um, it's semi-automatic, so it fires rounds, obviously, um, as fast as you can pull the trigger, but it doesn't go mad and, you know, fully automatic and just end up wasting your ammunition, because in a zombie apocalypse, I think ammunition is key. You've got to get off those those accurate headshots, and as we all know from Battlefield 3, the M417 is overpowered to hell, so you fire one shot, and you've pretty much ended the zombie apocalypse anyway, so um, the M417, and not only that, it um, it fires 7.62 rounds rather than standard 5.56 like the um, M16 and the M416s do. It packs more of a punch, even though it only does have a 20 round magazine, so I'm sacrificing magazine size for round size there, so that's my personal choice. Hopefully um, those bigger rounds would knock the zombies down a bit quicker and make my job easier. So that would be my primary weapon. Now with my secondary weapon, I picked it based on pretty much the exact same reason as the M417, and that was due to its round size, and I picked the M1911 Suppressed. Now the M1911 suppressed fires a 45 ACP round, which is bigger than a 9mm round that the uh, the Beretta M9 fires, for example. So um, it'd be packing more of a punch and hopefully be knocking down those zombies a lot easier. Now just like the M417, this larger round has its um, downside, which means the magazine is much smaller. The M1911 only holds an 8 round magazine, which is much, much smaller in comparison to some of the other pistols in the game, which have a, a 15 or even 20 round magazine. But once again, I've picked um, round size over magazine size. So then I hear some people ask, well, why didn't you pick the 44 Magnum if you wanted round size over magazine size? And that's because uh, while the 44 Magnum, of course, fires an even larger round that kicks even more of a punch, it only has a six round magazine, but also its reloading mechanism, obviously being a revolver, um, is much slower than a dropout magazine, and I would not want to be reloading that thing in a very tight situation. So um, for that reason, I've kind of gone for the middle ground, the 1911 um, over the revolver because of its reload speed, but also over the 9mm guns because it has a, a larger round. And also I went for the suppressed version for the obvious reason that um, it's suppressed, so if there's one or two zombies about and you wanted to take them out stealthily without rousing the suspicion of all the zombies in the area, I, uh, a suppressor is definitely the piece of kit to use. So that's my uh, primary and secondary weapons. Now in terms of equipment, I have picked two things. I have picked um, claymores. And the reason I picked claymores is a very obvious reason that we've all got to sleep at some point. Even during a zombie apocalypse, you've got to sleep. Or maybe if you're camped out on a roof of a building, you know, keeping watch or sniping down onto the enemy and you want to have your back covered, just like in Battlefield 3, put a yeah, claymore down and you've got your back covered. It also works as an early warning system. Obviously, a claymore won't kill all the zombies. But if it takes out the first two or three and lets you, you know, the explosion um, would rouse your suspicion and let you know that, you know, the zombie's coming. So... Not only would it act as a, a weapon, but it also acts as a kind of early warning system that zombies, you know, are on the way. So I think a claymore would be a really useful piece of kit. Like I said, if you were setting up base or just had to, you know, lay down your head for the night or something, it's kind of a good safety net to keep you safe. And my other equipment or item would be um, an ammo pack. Uh, hopefully, just like Battlefield 3, they would keep coming and I could keep throwing them down. And um, we all need ammunition in Battlefield 3. Now, 
with this, uh, the choice of packs, I find it hard to choose between, obviously, the ammo pack and the health pack. But then I thought, well, health packs, we all know that if you get bitten by a zombie, that's it. There's no coming back. There's no cure for the zombie disease. I figured that health packs wouldn't be too helpful. If you've already been bitten, then your time's up anyway. So I thought that ammunition would be a lot more useful. So having a large supply of ammo just means, obviously, you can keep that gun burning. You can keep that leg going and keep dropping those zombies. So um, ammo packs are definitely a useful thing. And my fifth and final piece of equipment, which I didn't want to include in the weapons section because I really wouldn't want to have to use it as a weapon, would be the ACB-90. Now, we all know from any kind of survival situation, let alone a zombie situation, a knife is a must-have just to um, get by doing lots of different tasks and lots of different things. And the reason I picked the ACB-90 over the standard knife is, if I am correct, it has a serrated edge, so it can also be used to saw things if you needed to cut down some wood or cut some firewood or make a trap kind of thing. But also, if you're in a really realistic situation, um, God forbid, but you could use that as a, as a weapon. You could uh, start stabbing those zombies in the heads if you had to. So the knife would be a definite must-have piece of kit. But as I said, I didn't want to include it in the weapons section because I really would not want to have to be using that thing as a weapon. Anyway, there you go, guys. That is my top five piece of equipment that I personally would take into a zombie apocalypse from Battlefield 3. And in the comment section below, I would love to hear from you and you tell me what your top five things from Battlefield 3 you would take into a zombie apocalypse. Whether or not you agree with my top five, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Give me the reasons why you would change it and, you know, or if you wouldn't change it and if you like my, uh, my top five choice. And if you did like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up because it really, really does help my channel out a lot. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'll have another video very, very soon. So in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.